Now we're talking about the plica, the sneaky plica. Um, historically, they've been wrongly blamed for adult, for a lot of knee pains. Um, they happen, but there are probably other things that you need to rule out first before you think that it is a plica. And often when plica is suspected, um, someone gets, they open up your knee and they cut it. So makes uh, the most sense to exclude other conditions that might be the source of the pain. Cause you don't want someone to open up your knee and think it's a plica and then get rid of it. And then you're done with the surgery and you still have pain and it's something else. Some people, uh, where the plica is the right diagnosis, they get it cut and they can just be completely relieved of their pain. But some people don't have that situation. Um, so plica, they happen, but it doesn't seem to be that common. And for that reason, they've been termed the dustbin diagnosis. Um, so this is called, it's called synovial plica syndrome. Um, let's first look at what a plica is. So when, as you develop, um, these, uh, shelf like membranes of the uh, membranes of the synovium, they should kind of get resorbed, but they don't. And there are some studies that indicate that 90% of adults have one or more plica in their knees. Um, but they really cause symptoms. Um, it's just, I guess it's just not fully resorbed. So it's kind of an abnormality within the knee. But if you look at nine, somewhere around 90% of people have them and they don't have symptoms, um, it's just an abnormality and often it's not something to worry about. You don't need to, uh, you probably don't need to create problems by saying that this thing wasn't fully resorbed. Um, so there are four plica, but the one that's most commonly an issue is the medial plica. Um, so I'm going to cover the different signs that you would, sh you think you're dealing with a synovial plica syndrome, and most of them are going to refer to the medial one, the one on the inside, because that's the one that is uh, most common. So the first sign will be anterior medial pain. So front of the knee, but more towards the inside. Um, I have an image here showing the inside of the knee where the plica would be. Um, and another sign would be different characteristics of that it is a plica. You'd get snapping, clicking, catching, grinding, giving away, or a popping sensation on the inside of the knee during flexion and extension. So it's when you bend your knee that you're going to have all of these uh, kind of clunky feelings or sounds happening. Um, the thing is that the, the medial plica, it can impinge between the quadriceps tendon and the femoral trochlea in knee flexion. Um, so that's probably why you're getting all of those noises and um, feelings. When the plica is set off, it will probably be tender to the touch. It'll be swollen and it'll be stiff. Um, it can hurt during stairs, during squatting, bending, biking, um, getting up from a chair after sitting for a long period of time. And the pain tends to worsen during activity. Um, in the book, I referenced uh, at the end of the book, I referenced this podcast where this guy was talking about Plica and how he will get someone to go do a run for 30 minutes or go do a bike for 30 minutes, whatever they do, and then come into the office and then test the Plica because the Plica uh, will usually get worse um, as the activity continues. Um, which if you're looking at like a quadriceps tendon, it would kind of be the opposite because you get the warm up effect. Um, so that would maybe be a way to distinguish between the two because they're both above the kind of above the kneecap, um, maybe immediately. Um, prolonged flexion can cause pain. They said in research that it could be the case if you're sleeping at night with your knees bent, um, which is kind of weird. It seems most people don't really do that, but it could be the case. Um, if there was physical exam the person could feel a taut band um, in that location of the plica. And they referenced two tests that both need to be positive to confirm uh, plica syndrome. They're the stutter test and the Houston test, Hugston test. I don't know how to say that, but both of those would have to be positive to confirm that it is a plica. Um, one of the problems is it can be difficult to distinguish between a plica and something else like a meniscal tear, like an articular cartilage cartilage injury or osteochondritic lesions um, to kind of rule out the meniscus. The meniscus would be locking and sharp, which would not be the case for a plica. Um, 
the other plica are the super patellar, infra patellar, and lateral. Um, they can all fall into the category of synovial plica syndrome. Um, it's just a location that would differ. So I covered a lot of the things I covered were the location of the medial, but you can have plica in those other places um, that can cause pain. So if it does get to the point where this is the confirmed uh, source of pain, uh, conservative management is usually the way to go. But um, if that doesn't work, they usually do arthroscopy and they cut it. And if this was the only source of pain, from what I've heard from people, from the stories that I have seen, uh, it does seem to relieve a person's pain. Um, so that's it for the plica.